Island ecosystems are among the most beautiful and diverse ecosystems in the world, but they are also among the most fragile ecosystems in the world. As most islands have been separated from the rest of the world for millions of years, they have their own unique wildlife, and this wildlife is susceptible to invaders. As I've covered many times on the channel before, certain island ecosystems can be destroyed by just one animal, and some unlucky island ecosystems have multiple invaders. Stories such as these may make you think that island ecosystems are weak, but this is simply not the case. Many island animals are completely capable of defending themselves against invaders, and some of these animals would even do well in mainland ecosystems. To find our first island animal we will be heading over to Madagascar, as our first species is the Fusa. The Fusa is quite a strange looking mammal, and it has many cat-like features. Its classification has been very controversial, as it shares traits with civets, mongooses and felines. It's in the same family as a few other endemic Malagasy animals, and it's thought to be more closely related to mongooses than it is to cats or civets. The Fusa is Madagascar's largest surviving endemic terrestrial mammal, as it has a head and body length of up to 80 centimeters, and it has a maximum weight of around 9 kilograms. It puts this size to good use as it is a very impressive predator, and it mostly feeds on lemurs, followed by tenrex, lizards and birds. To be able to catch their prey, fusas are impressive ambush predators, and their prey only notice them when it's too late. Today, the fusa is listed as vulnerable, but this has nothing to do with its ability to hunt or its hardiness. In recent years, Madagascar has been an extremely troubled nation, with most of its residents living in poverty and constant political unrest. These problems have led to the wildlife suffering too, and that's why many of Madagascar's native animals are threatened with extinction. If the Fusa was transported outside of its island ecosystem, I think it still has the chance to be a success. If it was introduced into mainland Africa, it would have plenty of prey to choose from, and these animals wouldn't be too different from their natural prey. Africa is home to a vast array of primate species, and the Fusa would be able to take down the majority of them. Of course the Fusa would have some competition, and it may also have a few predators to worry about. The Fusa may be able to avoid these new predators by climbing trees, as they're extremely well adapted and capable of doing so. It is possible that the competition in mainland Africa would be too much for the Fusa, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. For our next island ecosystem we will be heading over to Southeast Asia, and we will be looking at four islands in particular. One of these islands shares the name of our animal, as we will be taking a look at the Komodo dragon. The Komodo dragon is the largest member of the monitor lizard family, as it has a maximum length of around 3 meters, and they can weigh up to 70 kilograms. This size allows the Komodo dragon to be an apex predator, and they dominate the ecosystems in which they are found. They'll feed on animals such as invertebrates, reptiles and birds, but larger specimens seem to have a taste for large mammals. To help them take down their prey they are mildly venomous, and there are even rare cases where Komodo dragons have killed and eaten humans. Komodo dragons are not only very large and powerful but they are also very adaptable, as they'll feed on pretty much anything they come across including carrion and other Komodo dragons. For me the Komodo dragon was the easiest inclusion on this list, as there seems to be a lot of evidence supporting it. Even though Australia is sometimes referred to as an island continent, as it is so large I think it's fair to refer to it as a mainland ecosystem for the sake of this video. If the Komodo dragon was introduced into Australia I think it would be successful, and this is partly because the Komodo dragon originated from Australia. Many of its family members still live in Australia, and Australia was once home to a relative which was one of the largest lizards to have ever lived. The Komodo dragon could easily outcompete the lizards that are currently living in Australia, and it could take down the majority of Australia's native animals. The Komodo dragon could even deal with some of Australia's invasive creatures, and really I think little would stand in their way. For our next island animal we will be making the short trip over to New Zealand, as we have the Kia. The Kia is a large species of parrot, and it's found in the forested and alpine regions of the South Island of New Zealand. This bird has quite an innocent appearance, but it's not like most other parrot species. 
It plays a similar role in its ecosystem to other parrots, but it's also slightly like a vulture. The kia is an omnivorous species, and will feed on foods such as leaves, berries, nectar and insects, but it will also prey on other birds, and also carrion. Feeding on such a variety of plants and animals makes them a very adaptable bird, and they could take advantage of a few mainland ecosystems. In New Zealand, these birds are known to feed on invasive species such as sheep, rabbits and mice, and this means that they could do the same in other ecosystems. As they are found in both forested and alpine regions, there are plenty of places that they can fit in outside of New Zealand, and these places have plenty of animals for them to feed on. In these new ecosystems, they may not be able to find the plant foods that they usually feed on, but as they are so adaptable and intelligent, I don't think it would be too hard for them to find new plant foods to feed on. I think the Kia would be able to take over most alpine ecosystems, simply because they're so intelligent and adaptable. For our final island animal, we will be making the even shorter journey over to Tasmania, as we will be taking a look at the Tasmanian Devil. For this last inclusion, I've kind of cheated, because the Tasmanian Devil isn't only restricted to Tasmania today. At one point in time, it was found in mainland Australia, but it disappeared here around 3,000 years ago. This was until their reintroduction in 2020, and now the Tasmanian Devil can be found in both Tasmania and mainland Australia. The Tasmanian Devil is a very fierce and hardy creature, and it's around the same size as a small dog. After the extinction of the Phylocene, it became the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world, and it's related to the quolls and distantly related to the Thylacine. It's a very stocky and muscular marsupial, and it's known for its pungent odour and its loud screeching. It has one of the strongest bites per unit body mass of any extant predatory land mammal, and it's even able to crush large bones. In the wild, it mostly feeds on other native marsupials, but it will even target penguins and it will eat carrion. It will supplement this diet with fruit and vegetable matter, and this diet allows them to be very adaptable. The Tasmanian Devil is currently listed as endangered, but once again, this is not due to its lack of hunting prowess. Instead, the Tasmanian Devil has suffered due to human-related factors such as culling and road mortalities and they have also been affected by diseases such as devil facial tumour disease. Thanks to committed conservation efforts, they are making a comeback today. And if they were introduced into other ecosystems outside of Tasmania, I think that they could be successful. You can argue that the Tasmanian devil is in the same ecological niche as a fox or a doll, so they could thrive in areas where these creatures thrive. You could argue that they're more adaptable than these creatures because they're more than happy to feed on large amounts of carrion. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. If there are any other animals you think could have made it in this video, then also let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.